Hi, uh, welcome to Killarney National Park. Uh, my name is Peter O'Toole and um, I have many, uh, many years of experience at uh, controlling rhododendron. And today I'd like to show you how we deal with this, this kind of uh, bushy type rhododendron plant that's usually multi-multi-stemmed and, and it's uh, quite a common plant to find on uh, with mountain sides, hill sides uh, and with uh, wet heat, dry heat and um, usually <coughs> the, the, the plants end up so multi-stemmed uh, for a number of reasons. Sometimes plants are cut back by people and are not treated and then you will get uh, multiple shoots growing back you know from the the cut plant and you'll end up with a horrendous multi-stem plant like this one and also fire is another problem fire will burn through grassland gorse and also will burn the rhododendron above the ground but it it, it, it doesn't affect the the root of the rhododendron so the the end result of, of all that is that the root is still alive it will put up multiple stems and it will become a horrendous uh, difficult plant to eradicate going forward and fire also uh, burns the surrounding vegetation and it creates a seedbed for the spread of rhododendron because you're eliminating all the, the, the competing native plants we'll say surrounding rhododendron bushes and creating the perfect seedbed for the spread of for the for the rhododendron seeds to germinate in and uh, obviously the it will spread rapidly you know through those areas so today really I want to show you you know, maybe the best method that, 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 that we know of for eradicating such plants. It's the most environmentally friendly way and most efficient way. The other alternatives are you can come in with a, a machine and dig it out and you have a huge root ball attached to it and the plant, unless you destroy it in some other way by burning it or something, which really isn't uh, an option, the plant will continue to grow even after you remove it from the ground because there's a massive root bar with soil attached and you'll probably ha end up having to spray the, the plant that's uprooted. And the other, another option again that might be environmentally friendly is to go in and foliar spray plants like this and that's spraying all the leaves with, with, with the herbicide and the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the end result of that is that you're, um, you have a lot of um, collateral damage surrounding the plant and it's not the most environmentally friendly way to go really. And um, so look, what I'll do is to, uh, now is I'll demonstrate the method we use for, for uh, killing multi-stem uh, rhododendron bushes like this one. And so I, I, I'll, I'll do that now. The first thing you've got to do is gain access into the plant and that's the most difficult thing. Sometimes there are so many stems in a plant like this that it's difficult to, to know where to start. So um, I'll, I'll just go through the, the method now that we use. Again, this method involves a chainsaw, and again, you've got to have the right qualifications, obviously, to use the chainsaw, the right uh, uh, protective clothing before you attempt anything like this. So. So at this stage now, I've just opened up the plant for treatment and you can see how multi-stem this plant is. This plant was possibly cut back at some stage and not treated. And this is the end result of it. You have probably 20, 30 stems. So you, you've opened up the plant for treating. So you must tip every, the stem injection method that I'm gonna use here with the saw means that you have to tip every stem with the saw and treat every stem as an individual plant. So every stem uh, has to be treated, has to be tipped with the saw and then the herbicide applied afterwards. So we'll just do that now. Here again, like in the other uh, YouTube videos that we have done on rhododendron control, look, we use a hand applicator and it's uh, a 14% solution we use in water, a glyphosate solution in water with a marking dye. The blue color is, the, is, is a marking dye which will will show the work that's done. So I, I'll proceed now and treat the plant. So again, you can remove a certain number of stems in, in, the, in, in the plant to access the other stems, but the main thing is 
um, cut as few as possible because it's a systemic treatment and w when you treat the, 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 the individual stems the, the, the herbicide will translocate through that stem, through the stem, down through the roots and it's, it's a kind of a collective thing, all, the, all, the, all of the treated stems will kill the root entirely but each stem must be, you can't uh, you know, miss stems or, or so make sure that you have every stem uh, tipped with the saw before um, otherwise you won't get 100% uh, uh, kill on the plant. Now you can see here I just tipped every every stem in the plant. I haven't pl made a plunge cut into them like we would do with the larger plants. I've just tipped them all and what you do then is and the, and the ones you have cut as well to gain access you sp just spray those spray the cut ones and also spray where you have tipped tipped all the individual stems just spray on the stems spray on the cut where you have the, the exposed plant tissue which is very obvious the white colour so that's about that's about it just spray the make sure you get every one otherwise those those stems will actually survive and the plant is not 100 percent dead so you can see now that plant is 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 treated here we go, just the last few stems there. Make sure you, you, you look and make sure all the stems are treated. And, and that really is how we deal with, with multi-stem plants in Killarney National Park. And I think it's, it's, it's a fast, efficient method. And more, above all for us, it's mo the most environmentally friendly. Because um, as I mentioned, you know, uh, if you want to use a method not using herbicide, then your option is a machine to dig it out and, and even at that you'll probably end up spraying the, the plant that has been dug out because it will survive for, for quite a long time with a, with a massive root ball attached to it. So there you are, thank you.